Hi everyone, it's Miss Dubas here. Welcome to lesson six of the Climatic Hazards Unit. In this lesson, we're gonna focus on the effects of tropical storms and how we might respond to them. Please make sure that you've got a pen, a piece of paper and a different color pen to mark with and make sure that you're working somewhere quiet and free of distraction. And whenever you're ready, we can get started. So the title of today's lesson is what are the effects of and responses to tropical storms? So we're going to think about how we categorise effects and how we categorise responses, but also think about why it is that the effects of and responses to tropical storms varies between countries. So what factors might be involved within that? So we're going to start our lesson today by practising a geographical skill. Using the photograph, I would like you to identify four different effects of tropical storms. And there are two ways that you can go about this. You might make a direct observation from the image. So, for example, electricity lines damaged. I can see that directly in the photograph that the electricity lines appear to have been damaged. The other way that you can go about this is to make an inference from the photograph. And what that means is that you can make a reasoned guess as to other effects that may be taking place within this area, even if you can't see it directly in the photo. So, for example, farmers may lose income due to lost crops. I can't see in the, in the photograph that farmers have lost their income, but I can infer that it's likely that they will because their crops appear to have been flooded and damaged. So you can either make direct observations or you can infer from the image. So I would like you to have a go at the activity. So please pause the video, complete your task and then resume the video when you are ready. So we're now ready to mark your work. So remember you needed to identify four effects of tropical storms from the image that you were given from the photograph. So on the screen at the moment, you'll see the two that I used as examples and the others in pink are additional ideas that you may have spotted. So crops have been damaged. That's something I can see directly in this image. The cost of building repairs would be high. So although I can't see that, in the image itself directly, I can infer that from what I can see. Buildings have been damaged. I can see that directly in the image. Access to buildings has been cut off. So I can see that in the image, but I have made some inference around that as well. And injuries could be caused by building collapse. So again, I can see the buildings have collapsed, but I could infer that it's likely that injuries would have taken place as a result of this. So. You may have some of these ideas, you may have other ideas, which is absolutely brilliant, but you may want to add any additional ideas and thoughts to your own work. So before we look at the effects of tropical storms in detail, let's consider this question. What makes a tropical storm hazardous? It almost seems like a really obvious question, but we need to take some time to reflect on this. So tropical storms are natural events. The reason they become a natural hazard is because they come into contact with human beings. If human beings did not come into contact with a tropical storm, it would just be regarded as a natural event. So what is it that makes them so dangerous? Why do they pose such a risk to us? The most obvious hazards that tropical storms cause are strong winds and heavy rainfall. Category 5 storms have wind speeds of over 156 miles per hour and they often produce rain which could exceed 250 millimetres in 24 hours. These hazards, these issues, can cause several problems for people and the environment. Imagine living in the area shown in the photograph. The second hazard created by a tropical storm are storm surges. So a storm surge is caused by strong storm winds pushing seawater on shore. It floods the coastline. They can be up to five metres in height. So not only do people have to contend with dealing with the strong winds, the heavy rainfall, but they may also have a flooded coastline caused by these storm surges. So these hazards make tropical storms particularly dangerous for human beings. And now we're going to consider some of the effects or some of the problems caused by these hazards. So let's consider the effects of tropical storms in more detail. So what are the primary and secondary effects of tropical storms? We need to understand what is meant by a primary effect, 
what is meant by a secondary effect and be able to categorise the effects of tropical storms into each of these categories. So what is the difference between a primary and a secondary effect? So a primary effect means the initial impacts of a natural event caused directly by it. In contrast to that, a secondary effect means the indirect impacts of a natural event occurring in the hours, weeks, months and years after the event. Let's look at an example. So homes damaged by strong storm winds is an example of a primary effect. The homes have been damaged directly by the strong storm winds during the actual storm. This primary effect leads to a secondary effect. So insurance payouts to cover the home repair costs is a secondary effect. These payouts have been caused indirectly by the storm and are therefore a secondary effect. So we need to practice categorising effects or impacts of tropical storms into primary or secondary effects. So in a moment, I'm going to ask you to pause the video to complete this task. I would like you to copy and complete the table below. Which impacts are primary effects and which impacts are secondary effects? So let's look at the list. Businesses lose income. Crops are damaged. People are injured. Cholera outbreak. Cholera is a waterborne illness. It, electricity lines fall. Coastal habitats are damaged. So you need to decide which of these impacts are primary effects and which impacts are secondary effects. So please pause the video to complete your task and then resume the video once you are ready to mark your work. So we're now ready to mark our work. So please make sure that you've got a different colour pen in order to do this. I would like you to tick if you've got it correct. And then I would like you to make any corrections if you need to make any changes to the work that you've produced. So firstly, businesses lose income is a secondary effect. Crops are damaged is a primary effect. People are injured is a primary effect. Cholera outbreak is a secondary effect. Electricity lines fall is a primary effect and coastal habitats are damaged is a primary effect. So please ensure that you've marked your work and made any corrections, but also make sure that if you've got them correct, you've given yourself a big tick. So we're now going to look at the responses to tropical storms and think about how the effects of tropical storms are managed or dealt with. So what are the immediate and long term responses to tropical storms? We need to understand what we mean by an immediate response. And we also need to understand what we mean by a long term response and then be able to categorise responses into each of those groups. When referring to an immediate response, we mean the reaction of people as a disaster happens and in the immediate aftermath. So, for example, providing emergency food, water and medical supplies. When we refer to long term responses, we mean the reaction of people in the weeks, months and years after a disaster. That could be building a tropical storm proof housing like the image that you see on the screen. So we're now going to categorise responses into immediate or long term responses. So I'm going to provide you with a list of eight different responses and we're going to decide if we think it falls into the immediate or long term response category. So I'm going to take you through each of these one at a time and I would like you to record number one, is it an immediate or long term response? Number two, is it an immediate or long term response? All the way down to number eight. If you prefer, you can wait until I've read out all eight of the responses and then you can pause the video in order to work through them at a slower pace. And it might be that you want to pause the video so you can write out each response and then categorise them after. That is absolutely fine. But I will go through them all with you to begin with and then we will mark our work using a different colour pen. So first of all, number one, evacuation of areas at risk. Is this an immediate or long term response? Number two, providing emergency food and water supplies. 
Is this an immediate or long-term response? Number three, closure of airports and ports. Is this an immediate or long-term response? Number four, installing a tropical storm warning system. Is this an immediate or long-term response? Number five, rescuing stranded people. Is this immediate or a long-term response? Number six, rebuilding damaged homes and businesses. Is this an immediate or long-term response? Number seven, adapting buildings to be stormproof. Is this an immediate or long-term response? And lastly, giving a televised warning to those in danger. Is this an immediate or long-term response? So if you need some more time to make your decision, that is absolutely fine. You can pause the video now and then you can resume when you are ready to move on and mark your work. So let's mark these together. Did you get them correct? Did we categorise them correctly into immediate or long term responses? So number one, evacuation of areas at risk, immediate. Number two, providing emergency food and water supplies, immediate. Number three, closure of airports and ports, immediate. Number four, installing a tropical storm warning system, long term. Number five, rescuing stranded people, immediate. Number six, rebuilding damaged homes and businesses, long term. Number seven, adapting buildings to be stormproof, long term. And number eight, giving a televised warning to those in danger immediate. How did you get on? Give yourself a score out of eight. So now that we know how to categorise the effects of and responses to tropical storms, let's consider comparing some data, which is a geographical skill. So I'd like you to study the data in the table below. So it gives the names of five different tropical storms in different areas of the world. It also gives you their category. The category tells you how intense the tropical storm was. So one being the lowest and five being the highest. It also tells you the estimated number of deaths. I would like you to have a go at answering this question. Is there a relationship or a link between the category of storm and the number of deaths? Use data to support your answer. So you might need to take a few minutes to have a look at what the data is telling you, what it's showing you. So please pause the video to complete your task and then resume the video when you are ready to mark your work. So we're now ready to mark our work. So please make sure that you have a different colour pen in order to do this. So it's probably expected when you see data like this to spot a certain pattern. We might assume that as the category of storm increases, so from one to five, and therefore the intensity of the storm increases, that we would expect to see the estimated number of deaths increase as well. However, that is not what we see in the data that we've been given here. So let's have a look at my model answer, and I want you to see if you have also included some of the similar points. So there is no clear relationship between the category of storm and the estimated number of deaths. As the category of storm increases, the number of deaths does not always increase. For example, the lowest number of estimated deaths was during Typhoon Mayon. This tropical storm was a category four storm with an estimated four deaths. However, both category one storms caused a higher number of estimated deaths despite being less intense. So what we notice in the data is maybe not what we expect. And that takes us on to the last part of our lesson today. So why do the effects of and responses to tropical storms vary between countries? And why is it that perhaps the data doesn't always reflect what we might expect? 
We'll now consider which factors influence the effects of and responses to tropical storms. What might make the effects better or worse and what might make the responses easier or harder? We'll consider four physical factors and two human factors. But remember, each country is unique, so the factors will vary in significance between each country. So the first factor is the intensity or strength of the tropical storm. Generally, the more intense the storm, the greater the effects and the more challenging the response. Factor two is the frequency of tropical storms. If a country experiences several tropical storms in a short time scale, they may struggle to recover between each storm, which may increase the effects and make the responses more challenging. On the other hand, if a country deals with tropical storms frequently, they may become more skilled in their response as their perception of risk changes. Factor three, experiencing multiple hazards. If a country is managing multiple types of natural hazard, so for example, a volcanic eruption um, and an earthquake and then tropical storms, this would increase the effects and make the responses more difficult. The fourth factor is the relief of the land. And in the context of a tropical storm, low lying areas are more at risk of significant effects due to storm surge flooding. Responding to this flooding can be a challenge. Let's now look at two human factors. So the first one is population density. If population density is high, the effects are likely to be worse and the responses are likely to be slower. Lastly, so the last factor, the last human factor here is the level of development of the country. This is arguably the most significant factor. More developed countries are able to prepare more effectively for tropical storms, reducing the effects of the hazard. They are also able to respond to the impacts more rapidly. And again, this reduces the impact. So overall, the most significant factor could be the development of the country, as this factor would help to overcome many of the other challenges. So we're now going to apply this understanding to a main activity. So I would like you to answer the question you see on the screen. So suggest why the number of deaths caused by tropical storms varies between countries. Six marks. So why is it that tropical storms cause more deaths in some areas of the world compared to other areas of the world? What factors might be involved? So we've just been discussing six of those factors. So uh, we've discussed four physical factors and two human factors. So we've considered the intensity of the storm, the frequency of a storm, how some countries have to deal with multiple hazards, the relief of the land, the population density and the level of development of the country. So you need to choose two of those factors to write about and explain them fully. So make sure that you have developed your point in order to fully explain them. However, I would like you to make sure that you've chosen at least one physical reason. So, for example, the intensity of the storm and one human reason. So, for example, the level of development of the country in order to be able to develop your ideas within your answer. And these are the two that I'm going to model to you when I do the answer and we mark your work. Also, I'd like you to link each reason back to the number of deaths. So make sure you are really clear in your answer about how that particular factor or reason causes an increase or a decrease in the number of deaths dependent on the country. So I've done your little model paragraph at the bottom here just to show you what one of your paragraphs may look like. So in countries with large urban areas and high population densities, there will be buildings and infrastructure which could become unstable due to high wind speeds. This could lead to injuries and an increase in deaths. So I've suggested a reason and then I've developed my point twice in order to be able to explain my answer. And I've made sure that I have linked this reason back to the number of deaths. So I'd like you to pause the video and then have a go at answering your question. And then I'd like you to resume the video when you are ready to mark your work. So we're now ready to mark your work.
So please make sure that you've got a different color pen in order for you to do this. Now, as I mentioned, I've used intensity or strength of the tropical storm and the development of the country for my two reasons as to why deaths might vary between countries around the world. You may have chosen different reasons and that is absolutely fine. You just need to make sure that in your answer, you've stated the reason and then you've developed the point twice in order to make sure that you've gained your marks and you've also linked the reason back to the number of deaths. So let's have a look at an example of an answer. So the intensity, strength of a tropical storm could affect the number of deaths. The higher the storm category, the more likely it is that buildings will become unstable and collapse. This means there will be an increased number of deaths. The development of the country also affects deaths. More developed countries have the money and resources to strengthen more buildings. This means that the buildings are more likely to withstand high wind speeds and remain stable, decreasing deaths. So that would be six out of six marks if you were answering that question. At the bottom of the screen, I have given another example as well. So in addition, more developed countries have the resources to respond more rapidly. They are more able to deploy emergency food, water and medical supplies, which reduce the death toll. So you can see that I've stated my reasons, which gives me a mark. I've then explained how that particular reason or factor might lead to a difference in deaths. And I've also made sure that I've linked it back to the number of deaths. So has it increased or decreased the number of deaths? So please make sure that you've marked your work. If you would like to pause the video again and use my model answer to help you redraft an answer, that is absolutely fine. So that brings us to the end of our lesson today. And the lesson today has covered what the effects and responses of tropical storms are. Please make sure that you have um, now going to undertake the exit quiz and that you have perhaps summarised three things that you've learned from the lesson today in order to help you to consolidate some of that knowledge and learning. Well done for all your hard work and it will be brilliant to see you again soon. Thank you. Take care.